This is task 1G following method 1. What you've got to do is create a form that can be used for new bookings. That form won't contain any existing data, but will be used to add data to existing tables. Is creating this form where it will have a unique booking ID. It's going to have the booking date as the current date. The payment due date will be 14 days after the current date, the booking date. And then there'll be an option to be able to input data for new pitch allocations. This will meet all the requirements of the question following this method, and it will enable completion of 1H part three. The aim is to try and get full marks, but it does include some quite complex concepts as we follow through. In order to add data, we're going to use a table called new pitch allocation, which is going to have the data put in this part of the form, the subform. That data is then going to be taken from that data and appended to the pitch allocation table. So we're going to start by copying this table and we're going to make a, a copy of it by pasting it. And we're going to call it new pitch allocation we don't need any of the data that exists in there, but we do want to um, keep its original structure. So I'm going to click on OK, and that will now create that new table. As you can see, there's no data in there. Now, the pitch allocation ID needs to be an auto number. The reason for this is because we want it to increment automatically when using this subform. So that each time a new record is created in this subform, a new pitch allocation ID will be allocated automatically. That can only happen if it's an auto number, otherwise we have to type it in manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new field, so I'm going to insert a row here, and I'm going to call it new pitch allocation ID, and it's going to be an auto number. We'll set that as the primary key. and we'll remove the original pitch allocation ID. We also don't need the price charged field. That's because when we create a new booking, it's going to use the current price of the pitch. This will then be stored in the price charged field in the pitch allocation table, but so therefore we don't need a field to store it temporarily. So I'm going to remove that as well. With all the other fields, I'm going to add the word new in front of them so that it is quite clear and I can distinguish between these fields and the fields in the pitch allocation table. Now, if we look at this at the moment, we're just going to see a table with empty data. So if we go back to design view, we can see the fields that we've got and we're going to be entering a quantity entering a number of adults, entering a number of children. The booking ID is going to come automatically from this field here. But the new pitch type ID, that is going to be a drop down box. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a lookup wizard because it saves us having to create that drop down box later. So I'm going to click on lookup wizard and I'm going to say I want it to get the values from another table. That other table is going to be the pitch type table. Now we've got to decide what we want to include in there. Well, we definitely need a pitch type ID because that's what links them. And the description is probably sufficient. We're going to unhide the key column because although we don't have to stick exactly by the sample layout, it's a good idea to do that just in case the marks insist upon the pitch type ID being shown. So we then choose that we want the pitch type ID to be the value that is going to be stored in here, in the new pitch type ID. We've already got a label for it. It then says, do we want to enable data integrity? Well, that would be a good idea because we only want to be able to choose a pitch type ID that exists. I'm going to click on finish, save the table, and 
Now when we click on here, we can choose the type of pitch that we want. What you'll notice, if we started to create a new record, it starts at pit, new pitch allocation ID number one. Now if I was to try and append this later to the pitch allocation table, we would have a bit of a problem because the pitch allocation table has values all the way from 14 to 31 for pitch allocation ID. So what we need to do is put in some records for all of these, all the way through to 31. So my booking uh, ID here and new pitch type ID, there we go, that's the one that we really want. I'm just going to put a whole load in like this and we just go all the way down to 31. Now once we've used the primary key once, it won't be used again. So I'll just put one more in. So if I now delete these records, and now try and put a new one in, you can see that it's starting at the new, a new value for the primary key. So that's great. So this is a table that we can use as the basis of our subform, and it will temporarily store the data in that table, and then we can transfer it later to the pitch allocation table. Now we need to sort out some relationships because when we create this form, we want that data to be linked to the booking. So we need to create a relationship between the pit, new pitch allocation table and the booking table. So if we go to relationships, and you'll see here, these are the ones that we've got already. I'm going to show the new pitch allocation table and you'll see that because we created a relationship between the pitch type when we set up the lookup wizard, it's already got that relationship in there. What we want to do though is set up a relationship between the booking ID. This is purely so that we can create the form and so that the form will make sense and it will link to the booking ID used on the main form. So I'm just going to create that relationship now. I'm not even going to enforce referential integrity uh, because it's not actually necessary. And I'll click on create and there's that relationship created for us. Okay, so that's just something temporary. Now that's got our data structures set up. What we can now do is start to create the form based upon these data structures.